Okay, Chair Allen, we are live now. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our public planning hearing for Monday, September 27th, 2021. We have uh, four files this evening. Um, Noah and Lydia and Martin, Owen Frey, uh, Robert and Rosemary McLeese, and Michael Major in that order. And so I will call this meeting to order. And I'll ask the members if there's any declaration of pecuniary interest. Okay, seeing none, if something should arise, please let me know. Um, sorry, Chair Allen, I just wanted to verify for those watching from home that Deputy Mayor is in attendance. However, his video is off, but he is in attendance. There he is. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, this public meeting was called under Section 34 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990, as amended, concerning three proposed zoning bylaw amendments to bylaw 2450 and one official plan amendment. Uh, any person or public body is entitled to attend the public meeting and make written or oral submissions in support of or in opposition to any of the proposed amendments written comment should be submitted to the planning department. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the municipality of Gray Highlands before the zoning bylaw or official plan amendment is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of council of the municipality of Gray Highlands to the local planning appeal tribunal. And in addition, they may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. It is important to note that if you wish to be mailed a notice of the passage of the bylaw and or notice of decision, and you do not live within 120 meters of the subject property, you must provide your request in writing to the planning department of the municipality of Gray Highlands. Registering for this virtual meeting does not represent your written request. A guideline sheet is available upon request. The first zoning bylaw amendment is file Z47-2021. The registered owners are Noah and Lydian Martin. The legal description is part lot eight, concession 11, Euphrasia, as in R284379, Gray Highlands. And it has a civic address of 075462, Gray Road 12. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard mail on August 18, 2021, to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. I'll now have our planner review the purpose and the effect of the proposed bylaw and advise of the comments received. Planner Rocky, please. Thanks. The subject lands are approximately 41 hectares and are located roughly six kilometers north of Markdale on Gray Road 12. The property contains an existing dwelling barn and shed. The proposal is to rezone a portion of the subject lands to allow for the operation of a shop that will be used to manufacture agricultural components. The plan is to either convert the existing shed into a shop or to construct a new shop to the north of the existing shed. Only one of the structures will be used as a shop in the event that a second structure is constructed. The area to be rezoned includes the existing shed and sufficient space to build the potential new shop structure. The purpose and effect then is to amend a portion of the subject lands identified on Schedule A3 of the zoning bylaw from rural to rural commercial. In terms of comments received to date, the county commented provided that the applicant attains an entrance permit from the county for the proposed commercial use. County planning staff have no further concerns with the subject application. Additional comments should be received from the local conservation authority. 
a summary of Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority's comments that they have no objection to the proposed amendment. They recommend the hazard and wetland areas to the rear of the property be rezoned to align with county official plan mapping. Gray Highlands Building provided a note to the applicant that a building matrix and equipment layout will be required as part of the building permit submission provided the lot is rezoned and then a building permit is submitted. And Gray Highlands Fire and EMS requests a site inspection once occupancy has been granted again in the event that uh, the new structure is constructed or the shop is converted. That's what's been received for comments. Thank you for that. Um, and before I go to um, members for questions, the comment from Gray Highlands Building uh, says about a, a matrix and equipment layout as part of the building permit submission. If they use the existing shed, I guess they'll still have to get a permit for a change of use. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the total scope of what's involved with the inspection, but it definitely has a permit and um, the building department needs an idea of where the equipment is to make sure it's complying with kind of safety stuff, I believe. I was just thinking if they don't build a new shop and that perhaps it wouldn't need a permit, but it, I'm sure it does um, because of, of the use, the change of use in it. So, okay, thank you for that. Are there any questions for the planner? Okay. If the applicant or agent is present and you would like to make representation on your application, please identify yourself by stating your name for the record. And the agent is Solomon Martin. Is Solomon uh, indicating that he'd like to speak or not? Um, I show that Solomon registered for the meeting. However, he is not in attendance. Okay. All right. Is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments? Do we have anybody wishing to speak on this file? So if anybody wishes to speak, you can use the uh, raise hand feature uh, in the bottom of your screen, but I'm not seeing anybody with indicating their intention to speak on this. Okay. Any questions, comments from members? No? Okay. As there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. So that completes our first file. The next zoning bylaw amendment is file Z48-2021. The registered owner is Owen Frey, legal description, lot seven and eight, concession three, NDR, Gray Highlands, a civic address of 327337, third concession. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on August 18th, 2021, to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. We'll now have our planner review the purpose and the effect of this proposed bylaw and advise of comments received. Planner Ratke, please. The subject lands are approximately 41 hectares and are located roughly five kilometers southwest of Maxwell on third concession. The property is generally zoned rural with a small wet spot zoned as wetland and the existing barn area zoned as rural with the exception 419 to permit a dog kennel. The proposal is to construct a large swine barn roughly 380 meters from the front lot line. Swine barns and swine farming are permitted uses within the rural zone. However, the Gray Highland Zoning Bylaw only permits non-intensive agricultural uses within the rural zone. The size of the proposed swine barn meets the definition of intensive agricultural operation as per the parameters of the zoning bylaw. 
and it is therefore not permitted as of right. The proposal is to rezone the portions of the lot that are zoned rural to agricultural in order to permit the intensive livestock operation. The proposed barn site is also within 120 meters of a wetland and is therefore subject to a holding provision. The proposed amendment will also remove the holding provision that applies to the proposed barn site. The effect of this bylaw then is to amend the subject lands identified on Schedule A9 from rural and wetland to agriculture and wetland. A holding provision will also be removed from a portion of the subject lands. And comments received. Uh, Gray County commented they had uh, provided positive comments to receive from the Conservation Authority. Comment, county staff have no concerns with the subject application. Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority, a summary of their comments. They have no objection to the proposed amendment. They do have long version attached there um, explaining that they, they do not believe an EIS is necessary given the distance and the nature of the use and the, the scope of the wetland that exists there. And that is all the comments that we have on this file. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for the planner from the members? No. Okay. If the applicant or agent is present and you would like to make representation on your application, please identify yourself by stating your name for the record. And we do have our agent. The agent is Israel Bowman, and he did indicate that if he wishes to speak, he would be doing it through the chat feature. So, um, Israel, if you want to make any comments, um, please make them now. No comments. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant from members? No? Okay. Is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments? Please use the raise hand feature. I'm not seeing anybody making any intention to speak. Okay. Any uh, comments, questions from the members? No? Okay. As there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. That finishes up our second application. The next zoning bylaw amendment is file Z49-2021. The registered owners are Robert and Rosemary McLeese. The legal description is part lot 24, concession one, Euphrasia, part one, 16R6126, Gray Highlands, and the civic address is 807200. Sorry, I've lost my spot. The civic address is 807200 Side Road 25. Um, the notice of this public meeting was mailed by Standard Mail on August 18th, 2021, to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. And I'll now have our planner review the purpose and the effect of the proposed bylaw and advise of comments received. And Planner Rapke, just before you um, start, um, I did see in the chat that um, the, um, the applicant is um, made a comment and we will call on you when it's time to speak. Okay, Planner Rapke. The subject lands are approximately six hectares and are located at the end of Side Road 25 to the northwest of Heathcote. 
The proposal is to construct a ground mounted solar panel to the northeast of the existing dwelling. The property is zoned rural residential in the Gray Highland zoning bylaw. Section 5.26.2 of the bylaw permits and regulates solar energy systems. Small scale systems are permitted in the RUR zone. However, the bylaw requires that they be building mounted. It is implied that ground mounted systems are only permitted in the agriculture and rural zones. The proposed ground mounted system therefore requires a site specific zoning amendment to be permitted on this property. Furthermore, the bylaw prohibits accessory structures in the front yard and requires a minimum front yard setback of 17 meters. The proposed ground mounted system is to be located 15 meters from the front lot line and nearer to the front lot line than the house in order to avoid construction on top of an existing geothermal system and to avoid shadow from the established forest along south of the property. The effect of this bylaw then is to amend the rural residential zone to rural residential with a 433 exception number. The 433 exception will permit a ground mounted solar panel in the RUR zone that is nearer to the front lot line than the main building and is set back a minimum of 15 meters from the front lot line. In terms of comments received, Gray County Planning commented, provided the proposed solar array is situated outside of the mapped hazard lands, significant woodlands, and is constructed at least 30 meters from the stream. County staff generally have no concerns. Additional comments should be received from the Gray Solvable Conservation Authority. The summary of Gray Solvable Conservation Authority's comments is that they had no objection to the proposed amendment and the long version of their comments is attached to the report. And those are the comments we have received. Okay, thank you. I noticed when you said um, that the exception will allow a ground mounted solar installation. If the applicant wanted to add to it, would he be able to, or would he have to go through another zoning bylaw amendment? The plan, I mean, usually I write the bylaws based on what someone's asked. So the plan would have been to say, just the, the words a ground mounted solar system. So it would permit one of them. I might even write the word one and then another amendment would be required to allow something else. I'd have to look at the bylaw. It might even only, actually, I don't think it would even permit one as of right because it assumes they're on the roof, but I, I, it, it's gonna be one at this time is the plan. Okay, that's, um, that's the way I think it should be because uh, neighbors may be okay with one system, but perhaps not uh, multiple, so. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from members? Nothing? Everybody must be tired from the, the weekend. <laughs> okay, um, if the applicant or agent is present and you would like to make representation on your application, please identify yourself by stating your name for the record. And we know that Robert McLeese is is in attendance, if you would like to speak. Um. So um, it appears that Mr. McLeese shared his um, login with somebody else. So I have two Rob McLeeses, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to permit to speak. So if uh, the actual Rob McLeese would use the raise hand feature so I know which one to allow to speak. Thank you. Okay, Rob, you should be able to unmute yourself and speak now. There he is. We can't hear you. It doesn't appear that your microphone is connected. Are you able to hear me now? That's yes. better. Okay. okay, thank you so much because I've been panicking here for the last 15 minutes trying to figure out how to be seen and heard and watching those other applications get dismissed because the people didn't show up. So anyway, um, no, thank you very much. As um, Planner Rapke indicated, uh, I'm trying to keep our, our property relatively self-sufficient and trying to work with the local system because it'll help to strengthen the grid locally. I'm in the power business on a, my day business. And with the geothermal system in front of our house, if I moved the solar array to right in front of our house, it would be on top of the geothermal, which doesn't work. Um, we, I've seen a lot of these systems in the area and you're right, I now understand because of the bylaw being a rural 
uh, agricultural and our land, uh, most of it is not considered agricultural, even though it is forested. In this immediate area, it had been pasture lands for 50 years and we have it as fields at this point in time. Uh, I'm close to the road, but I'm about, as I said, 15 meters off the front line of the property. Uh, I do not believe my neighbors will have a problem with it. And it's a, it's purely a system for our, our house. The one thing that concerned me about trying to put it on our roof is our roofs, A, it's a steel roof. So you're going to have to puncture the roof to install it. And secondly, we're not the, because I do build solar power plants, it's not oriented the right direction in order to optimize the solar power that's available. So by putting it in the field, slightly off to the northeast of our house, it allows us to get the best, the best solar um, factor with the least amount of additional structure. So that was the reason for it. And I'd be very pleased, my wife and I would be very pleased if we could, if this could be allowed. The structure ends up being about 25 by 60 feet is the footprint. So it's not huge, um, but it will help. It'll, it'll take some load off. And as you know, Hydro One has trouble in the rural areas and we fr have frequent outages. This will help to make sure that the, that the uh, house and the local immediate area will have a little bit of power, so. Okay, thank you for that information. Are there any questions from uh, members for the applicant? The mayor, the mayor well, just, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question of curiosity is, you said your home and the local community, but how do you how do you share outside of your own? All because, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. The reason we share is because it's a net metering with with uh, okay. Hydro One. So the system, our juice goes right back into the system, and to the okay. extent that that the rest of the system is out, but our system is operating. It allows anybody who's directly connected to us, they'll get some of the back feed. Oh, okay. Good yeah, it's actually a pretty cool little system. Because that, it, because that's always an issue with with renewables is they're they're renewing, but your hydro's out usually in the grid. So you're that was always a complaint in the past where there was renewables, but you still had no power. So. We should, my understanding is that this should allow us to have a system. I don't believe I have to put batteries in there as additional, but you know what, it's, it's, I want to make this work. So I'm going to keep working till we figure it out properly. We're working with a group Otter Energy who've done this on a large scale and they are doing more and more residential. And so I said, let's give it a try. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Alwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you, to, through you to the applicant. So this is a fixed uh, ground mounted. It doesn't reorient right. itself. It's just pointed the right direction and built once. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? No. Okay, stay on the line. Um, there may be questions from the public. Is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application or have any questions or comments? Is there anybody wishing to speak? Clerk Martel, is anybody else registered for this meeting? Uh, no, uh, Chair Allen, only Mr. McLeese was the only person registered for this item. Um, I do yeah. just want to point out, sorry, that um, Solomon Martin has just joined from the first application. So if you want to let him know that it's already done. That there were no concerns or comments from any of the public. Okay, thank you. So Clerk Martel, you said there were two Rob McLeases registered. Was that um, just a, a double registration or? I think it may be my wife. Okay, you share. my wife and I are not together right now. Okay. I mean, we're 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 together as partners. We're just not physically in the same place. I'm I didn't the know office. how to. I, I didn't know how to comment on that. That's why I thought I better clarify. I realized after it came out of my mouth. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank so, um, any last questions or comments from members to the applicant? 
uh, not seeing any. So thank you very much for attending and um, giving us that information. And perhaps you can um, somehow get back to us in the future and let us know how this system works. I'd love to. If anybody's interested, I'd love to report back because okay. I think it's a good it's good for us to be aware of that and to try and encourage that type of behavior. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So as there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. So that ends our third file. And Clerk Martel, if you, there we go. All right. So the next file is a, an official plan amendment. And the file number is OP02-2021. The registered owner is Michael Measure. Measure, measure. Um, the legal description is lot 21, concession 12, Euphrasia, except part 1 to 3, 16R4013 and R559423, Gray Highlands, with a civic address of 636 327, Euphrasia, Holland, Town Line. A notice of this public meet, uh, meeting was mailed by standard mail on August 18th, 2021 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property. In addition to all agencies and persons identified in the planning act. We'll now have our planner review the purpose and the effect of the proposed amendment and advise of comments received. And this will be Planner Benner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The purpose of this application is to create a 0 0.8 hectare, two acre lot on a northwest corner of um, the uh, Euphrasia Holland Town Line and, and the abutting road. The, um, um, the creation of the building lot will essentially maximize the allowable severances on an original uh, 80, 80 acre, sorry, 80 hectare uh, township lot as uh, per the policies of Gray County's official plan. Um, so Gray County essentially permits in a rural designated area up to six lots on an original 80 hectare township lot. Uh, the Gray Highlands official plan, however, only allows four severances, so five lots on the original um, township 80 hectare lot. So an amendment to our official plan is required to, um, to allow the proposal for one final lot to, to proceed. The applicant has also applied for a zoning bylaw amendment under a, a file Z46 2021, as well as a severance application under B19 2021 to create the lot. In terms of uh, comments received, we received comments from the County of Gray Planning and Development Services Department on September 10th. And they note that the subject lands are designated rural under the county's OP and form part of an original 80 hectare township lot. The proposal would have the effect of creating one additional lot as I mentioned earlier, in keeping with the county's lot density policies being six total lots per 80 hectare original township lot, staff have no concerns. But they also mentioned that Schedule C identifies a natural core area in proximity to the subject lands, as well as Appendix B identifies significant woodlands on the subject lands, but outside of the area forming part of the new lot. And as such, comments should be received from the local conservation authority. They also identify that Appendix E identified bedrock uh, on the subject lands, but the bedrock policies um, shall not be constrained or shall not constrain the subject development proposal as the proposed lot creation would not have the effect of creating a um, non-farm size lot where bedrock is situated. 
And they also note that safe and adequate servicing shall be ensured on the subject limits. The Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority provided comments on September 8th, and they note that um, SVA staff have reviewed the application and um, as per their mandated responsibilities, and that they um, uh, the official plan amendment is acceptable to SVCA staff. Great Highlands Transportation and Public Spaces provided comments on August 31st, noting that a, um, a permit application will be required for an approved residential entrance um, that will be required to access the severed parcel from the Holland Euphrasia town line. And Great Highlands Building Services provided comments on September 7th noting that they didn't have any concerns with the proposed severance, but that any future development will require a building permit and must conform to all Ontario building code and applicable law in place at the time of the permit submission. And last but not least, Grey Highlands Environmental Services provided comments on August 18th, noting no concerns. That's the extent of the comments received. Thank you, Planner Benner. Um, a question, is it, the, the 0.8 hectare or two acre lot, is that, that's, that's in the zoning, that's in our, would be a zoning bylaw. It, so is that, we're, we're not, um, we're just allowing another lot creation. It doesn't matter whether it's two acres or 10 acres at this point, right? That's correct. At this point, it's, it's, uh, we're, the, the main part of this amendment is uh, the fact that we are one lot shy of the county's policies in terms of uh, rural land development. Right. Okay. All right. Any questions for the planner? Councillor Nielsen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, if I may, can I ask a question just for education purposes for me? Um, I have a couple of them. First one is, is there a requirement for distance separations from the different lots created on uh, this situation? So I, we can see from the mapping that there's, this would be the sixth lot. Being that it looks like it's a completely different um, person who owns this lot maybe than the next one or the potential of, is there a minimum distance separation just for curiosity's sake for one? Uh, to you, Mr. Chair, to... Uh, Councillor Nielsen, in this case, uh, no, because they're all residential in nature, so there isn't a distance separation. Cool. So for just for education purposes and trying to, to learn this one, because this, this is a new um, one that's have come through in front of me. Um, the other question I had was the uh, 0.8 hectare or two acre lot minimum, is that a um, new requirement in terms of sizing? Was there other sizes in the past or is this currently the official plan sizing requirement? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, the 0 0.8 hectare is, is simply the uh, what the applicants are, are requesting at this, at this time. There's no, um, when you're doing these sort of severances, it's a uh, you know, it's, it's just the county OP requirement for the minimum lot size that you can create in a, a rural area. The zoning bylaw amendment will, will clean that up if necessary. Perfect. One more final question, just for curiosity and education purposes. Um, through our official plan, we are allowed to be more restrictive. So in our official plan, we have the, the greater restriction of saying we can only have five. The county plan says you're allowed six and hence the official plan change for this application, correct? That's correct, yes. We, um, we haven't caught up to the, the county used to be, we were the same as the county, but then the county updated their official plan and allowed one more. So um, we just haven't caught up if, if we do want to, to catch up. And another comment on the uh, minimum distance separation, are you, are you talking about to a barn or, or just to a, because that will come into effect during the zoning bylaw amendment, right, to MDS. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question is more just out of curiosity for education purposes. If if other people have already um, severed lots, was there a restriction from one lot to the other one severance 
purposes. So because from the mapping, we can see that uh, the gentleman's going for the corner of his current lot, which is fantastic, right? It just makes it a nice parcel to be able to sell off, sever off. Um, but it does have a significant separation from some of the lots that are severed already on the adjacent lot. So my curiosity was just from lot to lot, was there a separation? No, it was just educational purposes for myself. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions from members for the planner? Seeing none, if the applicant or agent is present and you would like to make representation on your application, please identify yourself by stating your name for the record. And I believe um, there is a planning consultant. Vesta, do we have a representative? Yes, Ryan should be joining us. Good evening. Uh, hi there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, hi, my name is Ryan Cattuna. I'm the uh, junior planner. I'm the agent on the file here uh, for Mr. Mazur. I don't really have much else to add to the discussion. I think uh, the questions cleared up quite a bit that uh, Mr. Benner uh, indicated. So I think if there are any other questions from the members of council, I'd be happy to address any of those at this time. Uh, I guess the one thing that I will add is that uh, there is a 0.8 hectare minimum in the uh, official plan uh, in the county's official plan and we do meet that. There will be a zoning bylaw amendment um, further down the line that will clean up a couple things. Um, we do meet the uh, minimum lot size requirements that is outlined in uh, the Great Highlands official plan. It's just that there's gonna be one area of relief that we are gonna require, which is for the uh, frontage requirement, which is we noted as, or we are requesting 52 meters, whereas the zoning bylaw requires 100 meters. So that's just, just to give you guys a bit of a heads up and that's what's gonna be coming down the line in the future for this application. Okay, thank you for that. Are there any questions from members for the agent? Okay, I'm not seeing any, but stay on the line. There may be questions from the public. Is there anyone present who would like to make a submission in support of or opposition to this application? or have any questions or comments? Is anybody else registered for this meeting? Clerk Martell? The only other people are in attendance is Rob and Rosemary McLeese from the previous, so unless they have any comments on this, but I'm not seeing either of them raising their hand. Okay, all right. So any uh, last questions or comments from members? I'm not seeing anything. Okay, thank you, Ryan, for the information. As there's no further discussion, this application will be forwarded to a future council meeting for further consideration. Um, Planner Benner, yes. What um, will we be passing, or or will you be bringing this to council? before the zoning and the severance. I guess the applicant wants to know whether we agree um, with the proposal before he he would then do the severance application and then the zoning. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, that's correct. We would be um, uh, taking a report to council on the official plan amendment first. And should council decide that they're in favor of this, they would then the official plan amendment would then move on to the county for final approval. Once we have final approval from the county, we would then proceed with the severance and uh, associated zoning and bylaw amendment. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that. And so I think we're done. Did I mention it was Councillor Nielsen's birthday today? <laughs> and Councillor Nielsen and his wife's 14th anniversary, or anniversary on the 14th. There we no, go. I'm on saying Wednesday the 29th. Thank you very much, Chair Allen. All right. Now everybody knows. Well, I guess there weren't many people watching, but anyways. Okay. Thank you, everybody, um, staff and uh, members of council and public that um, joined us.
So I will declare this meeting adjourned at 5.40 p.m. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.